Over the past few years, the prospect of linking our brains directly with computers has given rise to the beginnings of a new industry. Dozens of startups are popping up, creating products to help people with mental and physical disabilities, revolutionize the way we interact with technology, and even alter the functioning of our own brains. We essentially open the door to the access of our minds by technology. So we're talking about the changing of foundations of what it means to be human. How did we get here? How well does all this stuff actually work? And if this technology lives up to its transformational potential, are we ready for it? For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. BCIs can record the activity of the brain, the firing of individual neurons. Obviously, if you take information out of the brain, you can in principle decode what that means. No? And just like there was a transition in technology from the PC to the smartphones, it is possible, I would say likely, that the next transition will be from a device that you have in your pocket to a device that you have in your head. If you've heard of one brain-computer interface, it's probably this one. All right, welcome to the Neuralink product demo. I'm really excited to show you what we've got. I think it's going to blow your mind. When Elon speaks, we all listen. That's just life in the 21st century. But Neuralink and its competitors didn't come out of nowhere. They're built on decades of work by neuroscientists attempting to understand and interpret what's going on in the brain. Over the 17 years of the BrainGate trials, the technology has come a long way, particularly as advances in machine learning have made strides helping to decode data recorded from the brain. Recently, they were even able to have a paralyzed man imagine the motion of handwriting and translate that into text on a screen with 94% accuracy. But clinical trials in university labs, they're really just a first step. Here in St. Louis, a company called Neurolutions recently got one of the first FDA approvals ever for a BCI. In this case, a non-invasive EEG headset that reads the electrical activity of the brain. The measurements aren't as precise as with an invasive system like the one BrainGate uses, but they work for Neurolutions' purpose, helping stroke victims to reconnect their mind with a paralyzed limb. All right, so we're just going to test the headset real quick. All connections good, nice and relaxed. My name is Mark Forrest. I live in St. Louis all my life, and it turns out I had a stroke. And I was pretty much paralyzed on my right side. A lot of people told me after six months that I was pretty much done, and I was going to have hardly any movement. When somebody has a stroke, a part of their brain dies. For instance, the right side is injured, and the left side can't move. Now, but if you talk to these patients, they can imagine moving, they can try to move, they just can't actually execute that movement. We know that 90% of those motor fibers that control opening and closing that hand are on that side where the injury occurred. What we found is that there's actually 10% on the healthy side, on the other side of the brain, that controls thought of, I want to move my hand. And so what we did is we created a brain-computer interface that really has three parts to it. A wearable headset, a robotic exoskeleton, and a tablet that walks them through how to use the system. All right, let's see. So let's do 30 seconds rest, and then I'm going to hit next, and we'll see what control you'll get. At the beginning of the program, it tells you not to move your hand, but think about moving your hand, and that's what you have to do. And then just imagine. It's picking up that intention to move on the uninjured side of the brain. It's converting that intention to a movement of the exoskeleton. As the person continues to use it over time, it's essentially leading to a rewiring of the brain. There's this kind of neuroscience notion of what fires together, wires together. So when they're generating those brain signals to move and they're getting that feedback from that wearable, that's leading to new connections forming in the brain that allows eventually that uninjured side of the brain to take over control of the paralyzed limb. My movement was just this. 
That's all I could do. Look how much difference I've made, progressed using that machine. I have arm movement, I have finger movement, I have wrist, wrist movement. It got me motivated to where I actually built my own fishing boat. My oldest son said it's gonna sink and it's not gonna float. My best friend told me it was gonna sink and not gonna float. Well, I proved them all wrong. Laura works in mysterious ways. Shit happens and nothing new about it. So you just make it work. Companies like Neurolutions are bringing BCIs into the realm of healthcare. But that's kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Tech companies are starting to get in on the action too, and they've got a whole different set of uses in mind for these technologies. One of those companies is French startup Nextmind, which is making a small wearable that can detect the firing of your neurons, much like the Neurolutions headset. And you can actually buy one from them right now for about 400 bucks. We enlisted some Quick Take producers to take Nextmind's interface for a test drive. Focusing on the center disc. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like the force, you know? Freaky. The current product is aimed at developers who want to build their own mind-controlled apps. But it does come with a few short demos, like a game that's controlled part manually, part mentally. Lead the little square guy to the end of the level. Help him out using your mind to blow up enemies and trigger mechanisms. This is quite fun. <laughs> I blew up a, a enemy square. I don't know how I feel about staring at enemies to blow them up, but it's promoting some kind of violence. <laughs> it's like your brain thinks that you're able to do it, and it just does it. So it feels, you know, like the future. At the moment, you can push a button by staring at it, and that's about it. It's like cool, but it's... I just don't really know how practical it is. Honestly, my brain kind of hurts using this. <laughs> but of course, it's early days for the company, and they ultimately see this as a first step towards new kinds of virtual interfaces. Nextmind sits at the consumer-grade end of the emerging BCI market, but it's just one of many nascent companies in a field with a wide range of different approaches, intended applications, and funding levels. At the other end of the spectrum are companies like Elon Musk's Neuralink, spending many millions of dollars in an attempt to develop truly game-changing neural hardware. Another such company is Los Angeles-based Kernel. With over $100 million in funding, founder Brian Johnson is setting out to read brain activity in ways we haven't quite seen before. Kernel pitches its first product, a $50,000 headset called Flow, as a giant leap forward for the field. Most headsets on the market right now use EEG technology to get a fairly general idea of your brain activity. The Flow offers a much more detailed look inside your skull. Johnson imagines a deluge of big brain data coming from these devices, helping science to tackle all manner of hard questions about the workings of the mind. It's a bit of a gamble, though, because we don't know exactly what all that information will tell us. As varied as the current crop of BCIs is, most focus on the same thing, reading the activity of the brain and translating that into useful information. But there's another frontier in our attempts to access the brain that comes with more troubling implications. Not just reading from the brain, but actually writing to or directly influencing it. In a sense, this is already being done with devices like deep brain stimulators, which send electrical impulses into the brain to treat movement disorders like Parkinson's. But here at Columbia University, neurobiologist Rafael Yuste is proving that it's possible to go much further to actually change the brain's perception of reality. So we actually activate the neurons that correspond to a particular image, and the mouse behaves exactly the same as if he were seeing that image. So in a way, we're sort of taking control of his perception and making him believe that he's seeing something that is not there. No? Now, what can be done in animals today could be done in humans tomorrow. Given all those potential problems, do you think neurotechnology ends up being a net positive or a negative? 
you know, technologies are always neutral. You can use them for good or for bad, no? We always have a duty uh, when we come up with a new technology to use it responsibly and put the guardrails so that this technology is used to help uh, humanity. There's still a lot about the human mind that we don't understand. And even the leaders of the field of neurotechnology are certainly a long way from cracking its code. Still, they've been able to leverage what we do know into the beginnings of a meaningful mind-machine link. And it's clear the applications will be incredibly varied, and for some, life-changing. As to what the future holds, I think that we are really going to see kind of a, a, an integration of kind of our brains and you know, machines for, uh, I think, really kind of a profound alteration of our human evolution, quite frankly. Is it possible to create you know, virtual memories? Absolutely it is. Um, is it possible to have brain-to-brain -brain communication? That's been you know, demonstrated by uh, uh, some researchers down at Duke. Can you upload and download information into the brain? Uh, um, I think that, that's a theoretic possibility. Whether, again, that's in 20 years or 100 years, uh, I think those are uh, possibilities going forward. And I think just in the last century, how we saw an explosive transition from the Wright Brothers airplane to kind of a, an F-22 Raptor, which would have been unimaginable 100 years ago, we're gonna see that same evolution with brain-computer interfaces. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description.